So I just made a whole recording and I <coughs> didn't record the audio. Oh, anyway, welcome to the video. I am Andre Botma and I'm going to talk about the taxation on cryptocurrency. This will obviously be just an introduction of how the taxes would work for that, or at least attempt at uh, explaining it in in a bit more layman's terms so that everybody can understand or get a rough idea of how the taxation works for crypto all right so let's get started so i'm just going to grab a text here and the first thing to realize or to understand about what cryptocurrency is according to the tax act is that it is a financial instrument and what does that mean? It basically means that it's in the same category, in the same, same as shares. So what does that mean? Obviously, a lot of there's there's a lot of things that you can do with shares. The same thing you can do with uh, a lot of things that you can do with crypto. But it mimics a lot of the, um, the, the interpretation, at least my interpretation, of how the taxes uh, or the activity that you do with shares is very similar to the activity that you do with, uh, with crypto. Obviously, crypto is way more, uh, can, can get way more complex. And this is why we have this discussion. And the reason why I know that it's tagged as a financial instrument or defined as a financial instrument in the same category as shares is when I go to the Income Tax Act. And if I just go back and I go to the definition, which is under interpretation here, Income Tax Act. Let's just be a bit patient. All right, so we've got the Income Tax Act here, and then we go all the way down to financial instruments. And a financial instrument includes any crypto asset. But what's interesting is that, there we go, there's shares. Loans are also in here, uh, and so we've got any interest-bearing arrangements, so if you earn interest. So crypto, so SARS decided, look, the best way or Treasury decided the best way to tax crypto is as if it's a financial instrument. OK, so that gives you a good idea of what SARS looks at. It's tax as a financial instrument. And so generally speaking, there are there are a number there are a number of things that you can do with cryptocurrency, the same that you can do with shares. But so if you go into cryptocurrency and you are simply buying you're buying crypto, buying crypto to hold or to huddle, hold on for dear life. Generally speaking, that will that would make you a, an investor. And these people, if they decide to sell or, for, or if they have some movements between their crypto, this will generally have capital gain stocks. Most people, when they have a share portfolio with a with a company, Generally speaking, um, when they exit out of certain positions, when they sell their shares, um, they also get a capital gains statement. It's not like um, it, it's it's not like the financial institution knows. Oh, this person is a trader, and then they don't issue the uh, CGT statement. So most most people, at least in shares, when they invest at a um, at a um, a company like Coronation or Alan Gray or whatever, and they sell their shares, um, even if it's on a shorter term. So, for example, two years, often that will be on a CGT statement, and normally that CGT statement is called an IT3C. So, the misnomer that crypto is supposed to be this thing where everybody is a trader because they because it's similar to Kruger Rands is a bit weird to me. Okay, so the first one is buying crypto to hold um, with the intent that you aren't really uh, carrying on your crypto activity as if you're a trader. And that that would be the next category is the trader. So what's a trader? So a trader, for me at least, is somebody who buys and sells crypto, who actually spends money and 
do a lot of extra things in order to maximize their profits in the short term. Uh, in the long term, simply holding crypto for a decent enough period might allow you to grab profits. And, you know, so, but the trader is out and out. It's almost as if that that's what they do for a living. They are trading in and out of positions in order to grab profits. So trader, crypto traders, uh, this would be uh, income or taxed as income or revenue, revenue in nature. Okay. Then we have different ways of receiving crypto. And the first one is you can earn crypto as if it's a salary uh, or something like that. You can stake, you can stake crypto, which earns you an interest. Then you have things like airdrops, where you receive crypto out of nowhere. And then you also have um, mining. And mining is where you've specifically set up a machine or, or you've got some kind of a program that's running that allows you to earn uh, some kind of crypto um, at a certain value. And the, and these, these uh these uh, these ones are generally also revenue in nature, and so th that's really the argument that that people are trying to make, or or at least um, that's difficult when you assess your 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 crypto activity is should you declare it as capital gains or should you declare it as a standard income, and it obviously depends on whether it was on whether it was as a trader or you earned it or you stake you, you received staking rewards or yield farming all those interesting things or you mine the crypto um let me move can i okay yeah <coughs> you mine crypto or there was airdrops involved or your, your crypto activity is mainly for investment purposes. All right, so people do ask, what about the three-year rule? So the three-year rule does not apply to crypto, but what is the three-year rule? The three-year rule essentially states that if you, have, if you bought shares and you hold them for longer than three years, it's automatically assumed that uh, that those shares will be taxed as um, will be taxed as capital gains, or will you, you can interpret them as uh, a capital investment. That, however, does not apply to crypto. However, um, if for for some reason, if you bought Bitcoin in two thousand and seventeen, and you only sold that Bitcoin in two thousand and twenty one. It's highly unlikely that that specific Bitcoin that you bought, that you bought that with an intent to trade it out as quickly as possible in order to make a, in order to make a profit. So that is why when I deal with a client or um, you know in a consultation, what I often highlight is intent, uh, intention reason for purchase or sale that's the first thing the second thing is ipsy dixit own assertion why is this important um, if I question a taxpayer about the intention, the reason for purchasing the crypto, it becomes way easier to determine whether the crypto activity that this client did uh, was revenue in nature, which means that they intended to to move in and out of their, uh, their crypto positions as quickly as possible to make short-term profits, to make a living 
on their crypto rather than somebody who bought crypto they played around with it a little bit they eventually sold um it, it, it there's no there's no very clear intent that this was that this was an out and out business or a a, a clear trade intent um and so that's part of what I have to do with, uh, with um, you know, to determine the intention of a taxpayer. And it's also important for you guys that's watching the video that if you are doing crypto is to understand what was your reason for buying it. If you bought Ethereum and then you changed it six months later into Bitcoin just to see what would happen, um, it, it would be go through the exercise and ask yourself, but why did I buy Ethereum and why did I change to Bitcoin? Is it because you are you are out and out looking for quick profits or is it or is it simply because you would rather want to hold Ethereum than Bitcoin or whatever the case may be? And the second the second part that's really important is Ipsy Dixit. If if that is your intent, if that is your Ipsy Dixit, your reason for doing that and you declare it to SARS, what's very interesting, the way SARS works works is they trust your Ipsy Dixit. That's very important. Uh, SARS trusts your Ipsy Dixit, which means that if you uh, or your tax practitioner, the person that you use to help you with your taxes, if they consider that your crypto activity was actually CGT or there was a split between you know, capital gain and there was income and they declare it as, okay, there was a portion of that is income and the rest is all capital gains and that's the ipsy dixit, that is your own assertion or the taxpayer's assertion on the tax return then you'll get an RT 34. You'll get an original assessment from SARS. That is, that is in practice what happens is SARS assumes that what you submit on your tax return is correct. Um, whether, whether there's a different firm that decides, no, 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 that, that, that interpretation is incorrect. It's, that, that's not up to them to decide. It's up to your what you think it is that you submitted to to SARS and what SARS spits out to you you know eventually maybe we'll get some crypto um, some crypto tax law that might change but that hasn't happened uh, yet there, there, there isn't really a crypto tax law uh, or, or, or at least a tax court decisions that has came out about crypto recently um, so that is why if uh, if you've got good enough reason to declare something as CGT and you've got you got good advice, trust the ipsa dixit. You know, trust the your own assertion that you made that you think this is correct, and uh, and then you get your original assessment and yeah, and you move forward from there. So that's what I would do. Um, the last important thing that I would just like to mention is. How do you declare your crypto? What if you've got a very busy wallet or you were a trader and you need to give this to your tax practitioner or you need to work it out yourself, you want to try and do your own returns, is there's a very good website that I recommend to all my clients is coinly.io and I'll, I'll you know, briefly show it to you, so coinly.io. And so this cryptocurrency tax software allows you to upload your, uh, you know, to put your wallet or your API and those details on there. And it will basically allow you to get crypto tax reports and it will split out all those different types of things, whether it was income that you received, you know, mining, uh, mining rewards, any staking that you've done, um, airdrops that you received. But it's very important to actually review the report that you got from Coinly. And you can do that on a tax tax year by tax year basis, um, but yeah, okay. So I think I think that's where I'm going to stop um, because that's uh, that would be the introduction to the taxation on crypto. So it's a financial instrument um, similar to shares. The activity that you can do in shares is similar to what you can do in crypto. 
Uh, then the tax interpretation, it depends on whether it is revenue in nature or capital in nature. And a lot of people uh, that invest in crypto or that at least went into crypto, you have to check your own intent, your own reason for doing it. And then you've got your Ipsy Dixit, which you submit to SARS and SARS normally accepts that assertion. So I hope this was useful. Um, yeah, I'm just glad to be back on YouTube. Uh, check out part two um, that will come out next week, Friday, where I'll go in a little bit more detail about how the taxable events work for cryptocurrencies. All right. Cheers, everyone. Bye.